Okay, folks, I'm back again. I uh, wanted to show you how I have always raised my fishing skill with my uh, low-level characters that are uh, good or a good standing faction with Surefall Glade. Here we have some druids and rangers. So you have to be in good standing with them to be able to do this. <clears throat> I like this zone for doing it because it's very quiet. And if you have a character that can forage, uh, you get all the standard forage table stuff, the berries and the fruits and roots, rabbit meat and vegetables. But you can also get some of the rarer stuff for the high-end trade skills. Uh, like these tuft of fox fur. You can also get the skulls and, and a couple of other items. Uh, it's just a nice, quiet, peaceful zone. It's very small. You're not going to get lag or anything in here like you would uh, playing the knowledge or something. <clears throat> you will not get bothered in here. It's rare for people to come by here at all, unless they're on some quest or something. It is nice because here in the main building, uh, the only building in the zone with uh, a lot of stuff going on, you have some quest givers, <clears throat> a tribute master if you need it, uh, several merchants, but... Uh, most importantly, you have a banker. So no long trips to Kinos or, or Freeport or zoning, gating out. None of that nonsense. You can do all your business that you need to do right here. Uh, doing low-level fishing just to get your skill up. It's pretty easy right here. You have docks, and this uh, building is surrounded by water. If you fall in, there's a uh, ramp straight ahead of me that you can easily get out of. There are piranha in here for levels 5 and below. You might want to be pretty careful when you get next to the edge. But otherwise, they don't really <clears throat> pose a threat to anybody. I'm running a bit of a cold. Apologize for that. All right, I'm going to bring up my uh, inventory here and just leave it open. I'm going to equip a fishing pole and go ahead and fish a little bit here and uh, forage. I'm not going to make this a very long video. It's pretty boring to watch somebody fish and it's pretty boring just to do it yourself. But when you need to get your skill up, this is a great place to do it. Of course, you'll catch all the uh, the normal uh, rusty daggers and, and fresh fish. I believe that might be a fresh fish right there I just caught. Uh, fish scales, the normal loot table for fishing. But in addition, and the, the special fish, so to speak, for this zone is the pine uh, chichlet, I believe it's pronounced. And why is that important? Well, that's used in high-end uh, baking recipes. Uh, you can use it to make prepared fish. You can also use it in some other recipes, but prepared fish is uh, a way to get good skill-ups at the high level and medium and high level end of baking. Uh, there are just multiple different fish that you can use in that recipe. But since it tends to be a higher end trade skill item, you have to go in some pretty high level zones, which also can mean dangerous zones. Uh, 
to get those items. Now that's that's kind of kind of a, a generalization. There are other safe zones that have fish that you can use to make prepared fish. Uh, but really, as far as peace and solitude, uh, small zone, no lag issues, video issues, you know, bothersome issues, oh, give me a buff, you know, uh, can I have this, can I borrow this? Uh, you just don't have the, the interaction with people. that would slow down what you're doing or, or just distract you. And so it's pretty nice. You can sit here and forage a lot of stuff as you fish. And it's just a great way to accumulate trade skill, you know, items. There's a couple of small quests in this zone. And I'm about to do one just to show you how quick and easy it is and it's great for raising faction you get a little money but so little it's it's not really worthwhile for raising money uh, got some fish scales that time uh, but it's just a, a really easy quest <clears throat> It is primarily for good races. Uh, if I remember right, it might lower your faction with some of the evil uh, groups in either the Kinos uh, sewers or Kinos itself. Possibly one that extends across over to Free Freeport too. It is. Uh, I don't want to say it's an original quest, but it's the mob that you have to kill has been in the game quite a while. I know it's been in there several years. It's in the uh, caves that are in front of me. Uh, there are bears that roam in the caves. Now, in the old days, people would come here and farm uh, the bears for skins for using in tailoring trade skills. Well, you lose faction when you do that. It's not a good idea. There are uh, poachers that roam uh, occasionally. Uh, very low level, very easy to kill. Uh, they're involved in one or two quests within this zone. Uh, you kill some. Uh, actually, the quest giver is, or receiver in this case, is right next to the banker inside the main building there. Uh, he'll give you an additional quest. If you decide to finish the quest line out. The rewards are not great. It was one of the original uh, quests in the game when this game was brand new, what, 17, 18 years ago? EverQuest is an old game, but with the uh, continual expansions and uh, improvement in gameplay, that made things a lot easier. For example, stacking, if you look at my cursor up here, uh, I've got a, a catch a lot bait here that I purchased off of a merchant in Plane of Knowledge. It gives a minor skill modification, fishing 2%, uh, 4 max. At my level of fishing, it, it doesn't really matter much, but uh, it was cheap bait, so I went ahead and bought it. My point is, if you if you can see this on your screen, the stack is at 112. Well, in the old days, it'd be 20 was the max for a stack of just about anything. And uh, 
they raised that up. Excuse me. <coughs> they raised that up to uh, stacks of either 100 or 200. Maybe it was 100, and then they raised it to 200. Well, now a lot of trade skill items, not all, but a lot, can go up to, I believe, 1,000 in a stack, which is so helpful. It's You can really condense your bank accounts down uh, if you use alts like I do to store uh, trade skill items. I've, I've played this game since the first year, not the first day, but the first year. And I've just accumulated tons and tons of trade skill items. Uh, most of the lower level stuff I've used, you know, long ago. And so the stuff I keep now is, is for the mid and higher end uh, to raise my skills up in the, you know, blacksmithing and jewel crafting and tailoring, everything you can imagine. But to get the skill ups needed uh, just takes incredible amounts. Now luckily they've, over the years, they've adjusted the uh, recipes and such so that you could buy most components. Maybe you only have to forage or loot, you know, the occasional uh, item to uh, raise the skill up, say, 20 or 30 points. So that's a, that's a nice time savings and money savings so that you can actually play the game more, especially if you play in groups with friends or a guild, uh, than just grinding out, you know, specific mobs in a specific zone that you may not like. Or have to compete with other people for, you know, just for some trade skill items. Alright, this is going to be my last cast. And then I'm going to go do that quick little quest that you can, that just about anybody can do. I don't know the level of the mob. If I had to guess, I'd say level 7 or below. So what I'm going to do is re-equip my little weapon. And just from that short time, we can kind of tally up what I uh, got here. Got some, got some stuff to sell to the merchant. 14 fresh fish. One tuft of fox fur. Some normal loot table or forge table items. And seven pine chitlets. So that means I can attempt to make at least seven uh, prepared fish. And believe me, that is nice to not have to buy that or... Uh, use my main. Uh, in my case, I have a uh, uh, what is my main now? It's been so long. Level 97 magician. Yeah, I've got bigger fish to fry, so to speak, than to stand around fishing all day. He's already maxed his fishing skill out for his level, so it can't be raised. So that's why I like to use an alt like this level 38 druid to uh, go ahead and fish. At least I get something out of it. Well, I'm going to reapply some buffs here real quick. Some shield of brambles, spirit of wolf. I, I don't need these actually to kill the mob, but I'm going to go ahead and refresh them anyway. Since it's so quick to do. All right. All right, from the main building here, we are going to head due east, and you can see how tall these trees are. And then the mountainside, there's a beautiful fountain there. And remember, this is an old zone, one of the original zones. So 
you know, it, graphics wise, it just doesn't match up to the modern games, but it's still a pleasant zone. So we're going to go over these, these berms right here and get up on the top of this one. And if you look into the mountainside here, you can see this indentation. And, you know, it actually does look like a doorway. Well, it is a doorway. It's a hidden door. It's an illusion. So you can pass through. And when you do and you stop and you look around, holy cow, who's that? Well, it's a blood saber defiler. This is one of the evil races and factions. I'm sorry, not race, but factions. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and con it just so you can see at my level. Scal's ready to attack, but uh, the color of the text indicates it's very little level. So I'm going to go ahead and root this individual. Let's see. Let's do... Yeah, let's root them. So they can't go anywhere. And then I'm going to turn auto attack on. Give you a little bit. Third person view here. <clears throat> I'm not going to use any spells or anything. I'll just go ahead and knock them down with my club here. Okay, we killed that one pretty easily. Oh, there's one of the bears that roams. You don't want to kill... <coughs> oh, excuse me. You don't want to kill the bears in here because it lowers your faction with people in the zone. Okay, let's look at what we got real quick. Uh, is loot. We got a tarnished dagger. And we got a tuft of gray wolf fur. So that's pretty good, man. That's that's a high level forage item. So uh, I'm going to actually put these over here since they're so valuable. Don't want to accidentally sell them. I'm going to move this fish over too. And fresh fish can be purchased in plain of knowledge now off of vendors. You don't have to spend endless hours fishing just to get it uh that's pretty nice that means you can raise your baking skill up very quickly just by purchasing it and it's very cheap it's a few coppers maybe a silver very cheap to buy them everything else in this little bag i'll sell uh i've got my loop filters on and even if i didn't it would still ask me if i want to dilute this <coughs> this is the blood saber defiler's head and uh, bring up the information it is a no trade item and it's for a quest I'm gonna go ahead and loot it close out that information window I'm gonna leave my bags open just so you can see and I'm gonna go back out the secret doorway there and between these two big trees I'm just going to come straight out and you know you're in the right place because you see these torches and you turn left into this hollowed out tree and you have some guild masters the one you want is this uh, how do you pronounce it Salmikia tree hearth I'm horrible with the way they want this stuff pronounced. Anyway, if you uh, talk to her, she'll give you the uh, she'll give you some information. Anyway, just give the head to her, and when you do, you will get a rusty pine druid scimitar. This is a lore item. Uh, 
You can't sell it. I've tried. You can't sell it to a merchant. It says it can be used in trade skills. You can. You can level up blacksmithing skill, I believe. Anyway, let's look at the uh, what it says. <coughs> okay. Your faction standing with the Jagged Pine Tree Folk has been adjusted by 10. So that's a pretty good jump off just handing in an item. Uh, Protectors of the Pine has been adjusted by 2. The QRG Protected Animals has been adjusted by 1. And the Unkempt Druids has been adjusted by negative 2. The Guards of Kinos has been adjusted by 1. So this helps your Kinos faction. <coughs> I've never tried to do this using an illusion, so all you evil races out there, I I don't know if you can do it. I suspect you can. If you stand behind uh, and you're in viz, possibly you could do it. Don't quote me on that. Using an illusion, you may be able to do it. Uh, like I say, I've never tried to do that ever before. Uh, one thing about the unkept druids that you actually lose faction with, the only one I know of in the game, and I'm sure there's several, but the only one I know of in the game is in, I believe, South Karana. Uh, it's got a little, got a little house that he lives in. Uh, other than that, I do not know. Of any on that of any mobs on that faction. Anyway, come back out of the building, go straight. I'm gonna drop off the cliff here. You got a little notch that you can travel through, and you come back to the main building. You have a merchant over here that sells smithing supplies. And as you can see, they give you zero copper, so that means she won't buy it. This rusty pine druid scimitar. Now, if you uh, if you uh, look at what she tells you, not not the uh, merchant, but the lady, the guildmaster that gave you the scimitar in the first place when you turned the head in. This is basically you could sharpen it up and you need uh, need a forge and a sharpening stone. And let's see, it may take you several attempts if you're unfamiliar with the process. Once that is done, return to me with sharpened pine druid scimitar, a gnaw fang, and a large king snake skin. Anyway, as you can see, it's a pretty easy quest to do even for low levels. But about the sharpening stone, that's just an easy way to get new players at the time. Uh, a chance to increase their blacksmithing skill. Uh, I remember doing the quest a long time ago when I was, I think, like level 6 or level 7. And I'm going to say it took 6, 7, 8 attempts. And you use up a, a sharpening stone which each with each attempt. Uh, but I got a skill up on every attempt also. So at the time I thought that was just fantastic. Little did I know uh, it just got harder and harder and harder after that and more expensive. But anyway, <clears throat> this is one of the original zones. And so that was just a, a fairly easy starting quest to... Uh, get people to do other things than just, you know, kill, kill, kill. So, all right, I'm going to sell some of this trash real quick. Get a little money. Not much, a little money. For low levels, fishing is one of the most profitable things you can do without trying to kill stuff and die. Uh... And as advanced as this game is now from its beginnings, uh, 
it actually still is, especially with uh, those pine chitlets that I just fished. Uh, you know, those can be sold. They're not no drop, so there are high level characters would much rather give you, you know, tons of platinum in exchange for their time, you know, endlessly fishing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh drop the scimitar. And you can see the graphic on the floor there. And remember when you drop a weapon in EverQuest, it always points north <coughs> there we go due north okay it's gonna wrap it up I'm gonna go ahead and drop some of the stuff in the bank so I can transfer it to my higher level character that needs these components And that's going to do it for this video. I uh, hope you learned something. I know it may not be the most enjoyable video you've ever watched, but uh, maybe it gives you a different view, different aspect, or an idea for obtaining trade skill items. Uh, if it helps you or anything, hey, let me know. Give me some feedback. Leave a comment. Uh, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and give me a thumbs up there. Uh, I could use all the likes I could get. And uh, if you'd like to, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to keep posting videos. I've got some time off from work here due to a broken foot. So I'm going to make a bunch more videos. Just little tiny uh, tips. Uh aspects of the game maybe the average player never considered uh, because we're so used to you know get out there and kill things and level up and you know EverQuest is so vast and expansive and it has so many different ways you can play the game that uh, you just can't do it all yourself there's always somebody that has discovered something different or does things a different way that that you might like to. So, well, thank you for your time. That's the end of the video.